okay so uh, let us start so now why i am taking this orientation is because like uh, many of you might be confused on how to approach 2025 csat paper like many of you will be facing issues in csat uh, all those things that we will be addressing in this uh, session we'll see how you need to prepare for 2025 and how our session how our course will be all these things we will address in this class okay so let us uh, start and I think everyone have written at least one right prelim. So if is there anyone who is going to write the prelims for the first time in 2021, 25? If anyone is there, you can uh, you can just send a message. No. So everyone has written one time. So so that means. You already know how uh, UPSC exam works, like right civil service exam works. So, just saying this, uh, I'm just saying about the exam now. So you know that you have two papers in prelim, right? So you have the paper one, and you have paper two. So in paper two, there is 80 questions, right? And each question is around uh, is 2.5 mark. So total you will be having. Uh, 200 marks and to clear CSAT you need 33 percentage of the mark which means it is 66 mark so you need to get 66 mark to clear the CSAT paper right so uh, we always say that it is safe to attend around 40 to 45 questions so you need to at least attend 40 questions okay it depends sometimes especially when it comes to 2024 paper it was somewhat easier compared to 2023. So students were able to attend more questions. But in 2023, the paper was tough and students were able to only attend a, a lesser questions than 40. Average, I think it was 35 to 40. So it depends on the paper also. But we say that on average, if you can attend 40 questions, it is very good. Okay, 40 plus questions, you have to try to attend 40 plus questions. So now I'll just show you one thing. That is, if you are not getting anything wrong, if you are all your questions are correct, then you just need to attend 27 questions. So if you have attended 27 questions and all those 27 questions are correct, then that means you will be getting 67.5 marks. That means you will be passing the paper, right? So that is uh, 27 questions is that magical number, but that is when you have no incorrect answers. Now, now I will show you one thing. If you are attend, if you are getting one more question correct, that means you are getting like twenty eight questions correct. Twenty eight questions. You are getting twenty eight questions correct. That means you are getting a buffer of making four questions wrong. So if you are if you are writing twenty, if you are getting twenty seven questions correct, then you shouldn't be having any incorrect answers. Then only you will pass. But if you are making twenty eight questions correct you can make four mistakes also. So that is the importance of getting just one more question correct. So you need to understand that. Okay, even when you are uh, making more correct, that means you are getting buffer to make incorrect responses also. So just like that, if you are making 29 correct, you can make seven wrong. Still, you will be passing the paper. So that I am just showing this because that is the importance of getting just one question correct. Whenever you are getting one question correct, you are also getting buffer to make three or four questions wrong also. Okay, now I'll be showing one uh, very important thing later. Okay, now before studying into the CSAT, before you start studying the CSAT, you should know why CSAT paper is there. That is actually very important. Only, uh, you, only after you understanding that why there is a CSAT paper, then you can strategize accordingly. So why, why do you think UPSC is making CSAT paper? So many students are, uh, many students, are, especially after 2023 paper, you know that there were uh, many, you know, many issues were there, right? It was tough when students were saying like, this is only a qualifying paper and why UPSC is making it difficult, like it is making DTEC students pass more, right? So all those things were there, all those issues were there. 
So uh, why do you think CSAT paper is there? Why CSAT, UPSC introduced CSAT paper? You know, initially CSAT paper was not there, but UPSC la later introduced it, right? It means that UPSC needs CSAT paper. So uh, whenever you uh, you might be uh, completed, you have, you all might be completed your degrees, right? Then when you are going into a multinational company, if you are joining a multinational company, in most of the places, in most of the companies, you have to write an aptitude test first, right? So you are writing an aptitude, and in all the exams, like if you are preparing for SSC, RBI, whatever, NABAD exam, everywhere there are aptitude, your aptitude is being tested. And sometimes what happens is that when you, when you look into SSC paper and all, there, you, there sometimes your mathematical skills are being tested also, yeah? like your calculation skills are tested, and sometimes the tricks will also work. Like in SSC especially, you will be studying like if some question comes like this, we have to use this trick. If a question comes like this, we have to use that, those tricks. But all these things will not work in UPSC. Because UPSC, UPSC's language and UPSC, the way UPSC is asking question is slightly different. Okay, so why, so why CSAT is there? Why is CSAT paper is there? Okay, so one thing is that, especially uh, when you are in the exam hall, when you are starting to write, uh, whether it is paper one or paper two, when you are starting to write the paper, when you are in that exam hall, you will be feeling so much of stress, right? Everyone will be experienced that. And everyone, I think everyone have already written prelims one, so, Everyone might have experienced that kind of pressure, that kind of stress and everything. So in that trust, you need to write the paper. So that is also your aptitude. Okay, how you are managing the stress. That is also your aptitude. And I always say to my students that it is more important to leave a question than to attend a question. Because I already told you that in 80 questions, you need to attend around 40 questions. That is a safe zone. Now, for, you are attending 40 questions means you are also not attending for the rest of the 40 questions. Right? So, you must decide whether to attend a question or not attend a question. That is also important. That is the major thing that students are making issues with. Like, when you are getting a, when you see a question, whether it's math or whether it's uh, comprehension, whatever it is, you should take a decision within first 10 seconds that I am going to write the question or I am leaving it. That is also important. That is also your aptitude. Okay. Mostly what happens is that students will attend the question. Students will attend the question. And like once uh, they have done like 70 percentage of the question, then only they are coming to, the, coming to know that, oh, I am not able to answer this question. Right. So your whole time is gone. So whenever you are taking a paper uh, in the in this course, I will be also telling you how to attend the not in this session, but in a later session after we have uh, taken some topics, I'll I'll show you how you need to attend the question as well. How you need to when you are getting a question paper, how you need to strategize as well. I'll take 2023 paper because it was more tougher. And you know, uh, one of my friends actually she already get uh, she got the service last year. And she used to fail in all the CSAT paper. It was her last attempt in 2023. And CSAT paper was tough. But she only cleared this 2023 paper. She only cleared 2023 CSAT. Into, she, I think she started writing from 2018. The so 2018, 2019, 2020, all these CSAT papers she failed. That is easier papers she failed, but she only cleared in 2000. So why? It was because of her, you know, her strategy. Okay. So if you had that proper strategy, it was actually not that difficult to clear 2023 paper as well. So I, I will be taking a special session on how to, when you are getting a paper, how you need to approach in, in the later part of this course also. Okay. So when it comes to CSAT paper, first major thing is it is testing your aptitude. So aptitude doesn't mean it's it's not your calculation skills, especially if you see the UPSC papers, okay, uh, especially in, in these UPSC papers, uh, it's not testing your calculation skills. It is testing how you think, how you are making the decisions, 
okay how you, whether you are uh, attempting the question or whether you have decided to leave it all these things are actually being tested okay so it's ma majorly it is your thinking ability upsc is testing majorly your thinking ability how you are managing the stress how you are taking the decisions and how, whether you have that conceptual clarity or not it's not about the tricks you will be knowing many tricks but upsc will ask the questions in a more innovative way then you uh, more than the trick your conceptual clarity uh, is uh, important there so in our classes i will be taking in a more conceptual clarity i will be giving you that conceptual clarity we, we tricks will be there but once you are understanding the conceptual clarity then only then only you have to go for the trick because if you have that conceptual clarity if you pc is asking in a more innovative way then also you will be able to answer that question okay so both you should know tricks and conceptual clarity so we will be taking in that way only okay and we will be also i will also teach you how to strategize your preparation how to strategize your uh, when you are in an exam hall how you should approach everything we will be taking in the class okay so we'll just uh, look into the last six years of csat paper so we can say that generally in 2024 23 22 in the last uh, years normally 27 questions are coming from comprehension and around 30 33 questions are coming from quantitative part and around 20 questions are coming from reasoning part so all these parts will be taking uh, in our course will be uh, doing comprehension will be doing quantitative part and will be doing also this reasoning part so this is the general trend and you will all be knowing that and when it comes to important topic as you know the most important topic is number system okay because from number system uh, around in 2023 and 24 average 14 15 questions have come in last two years okay and when it comes to permutation and combination there was nine questions in 2023 but in 2024 no questions were asked from from permutations and combination and uh, permutations and combination will be covering in the classes and i'll show you how you need to address the questions from term permutation and combination and if you see the questions uh, that upsc has asked from permutation it, you don't need any formulas to solve that it's mostly your uh, you know the logical thinking that thinking part is being tested you don't need ncr ncr formulas to solve the questions of upsc you just need that logical thinking ability so we'll be taking in that way also okay so this some of these are some of the topics like number system series and progression simple equation divisibility percentage all these are some important topics so uh, you need to focus more on these topics but you also have to study all the topics you shouldn't skip any topics you have to study all the topics but you have to give a little more focus on these topics because more questions are being asked from this topic i'll be sharing this with you okay i'll share this uh, uh, pdf with you no problem now when it came when it came to 2023 see that actually upsc's paper was like it was skewed towards some topics like 40 questions came from just seven topics in 2023 these were the seven topics 40 questions 40 questions means 27 questions are from com comprehension and only 53 questions are coming from Uh, reasoning and quantitative part out of this 53 questions 40 questions were from these seven topics in 2023 so there were so many issues with 2023 paper the questions were more tough the questions required high very high level of thinking especially math questions but comprehension was easy comprehension was i think comprehension was the most easiest to one in the last 5 6 years when it comes to 2023 so upsc had made uh, this quantitative and reasoning part more difficult but comprehension was easier so those who focused more on comprehension got good marks in 2020 okay so uh, that's there you always need to mix up you should uh, you know sometimes comprehension may be easy sometimes quantitative may be easy sometimes reasoning may be easy so you have to learn everything and then according to the paper you should change your strategy also okay if you feel that comprehension is more easy you can attend more comprehension questions if you feel that uh, quantitative is easy you can attend more it depends so you shouldn't have a like a strong strategy i will only do this don't think like that it depends on the question paper also 
Now, when it comes to 2024 paper, it was not like that. UPSC actually asked from all the topics. Every topics, most of the topics was given same, same importance. Only like one, two or three topics had more questions and all the topics, other topics, one or two questions came. So it was more balanced paper this year. And this year, uh, quantitative and reasoning part was more easy. It was more easy and English comprehension was a little bit tougher compared to 2023. So th that will be there. UPSC will always uh, make that balance. If uh, quantitative is tough, then comprehension may be easy. If comprehension is tough, quantitative will become easy. So that's why I'm saying you, you, you should learn all the topics. You should practice all the topics. And then according to the paper, you can adjust your strategy as well. Okay. Now, this is actually very important. What I'm going to tell you is very important. Maybe some of you might already know this thing. Okay. So whenever you are writing research paper, you should always attempt in multiples of four. That means like, you know, uh, you can attend 36 questions. 36 is a multiple of four. Then you can attend 40 questions. 40 is a multiple of four. You can attend 44 questions. You can attend 48 questions. So you need to attend in this way. I'll show you why actually. So I have given you one example here. So let us take an example. Let's say you have attended 33 questions in CSAT. Okay, you attended 33 questions in CSAT. Let's say, let's say that you got 29 right and you have four wrong. You have 29 right and four wrong. Then your marks will be around 69. That means you will pass the paper. Now, if you got 28 right and then uh, like five wrong, okay, five wrong, then that means you, you will be only getting around 65 marks, you will fail. So these are the two conditions, one in which you pass and one in which you fail. Now, 33 is not a multiple of four. Next multiple of four is 36. Okay. So let's say you are attending three more questions. You are just attending three more questions. You don't know the answer. You're just uh, uh, like in keeping it from and all. You are just uh, making that three questions. Okay. Now, what is the worst case? The worst case is all these three questions becoming wrong. So let's say that all your three questions became wrong. You are making it a multiple of four. You only had 36. So you are making it 36. You are just attempting three more questions. And... Let's say that all these three questions are wrong. Now, what happens? If this was the case, if you are already passed, then you will be getting 29 right, four wrong were there. Now it became seven wrong, right? Because all three got wrong. Still, you will be having 66 mark, you will be passed. So when you, you are already passed, you are here also, you are passed. Now, let's say that in here, 28 wrong. So 28 wrong and 5 right, uh, sorry, 28 right and 5 wrong were there. Now it becomes 8 wrong if all the three questions were incorrect. You will be having like 63 or 64 marks. You will be again failed. So earlier you were failed, now also you are failed. But the thing is, out of three, these three questions, if one of each, one became right, okay, if one was right, then if you were in this situation, you will pass the paper. So whenever you are making it to a multiple of four, it will not affect your pass or fail. If you are already passed and you are making it to a multiple of four, you will be passed. But even if you are getting all the all those wrong. Now, if you are failed, then there is a chance that you will become passed if you are making it to a multiple of four. This is especially important for the students who are getting around like 65 marks, 64 marks. Any of you, uh, you have failed getting 65 or 64 marks before in prelim? Did you got like around 63, 64, 65 in any of the previous prelims? prelims? Yes, right? Many will be there. So for them, if they knew this trick, if they would have made it to multiple of four, then they, there was a chance that they might have passed the paper. This is important. Okay, you can, I have tested it with many examples. You can also take many examples and do. Now, now, for example, let's say you had written 40 questions. 
40 is already a multiple of 4. So then don't make it 44. Okay. Because if 40 is already a multiple of 4. So then you don't make it to another multiple of 4. But like you have attended 40. Now you are thinking of attending one more. You know like 50-50 chance is there. So you made, you made it into 41. Then if you made it into 41, make it into 44. It won't change your result. So do this one towards the end of the paper. Like 4.30, you have to give the paper, right? So like at 4.15, you understood that you have written 40 questions. Or if you have written like 41 questions. Then towards the like last 5 or 10 minutes, you do 3 questions, whatever. No, no problem. Even if you... Uh, like uh, if you don't know the answer also do it make it into multiple of four doesn't matter you will the, the result will not be so you can do this in your exams okay and you can also practice it now i will tell you another thing here so this is a uh, this is from the instructions part of the paper so here if you read this one just read this sentence you can see that in case you feel there is more than one correct response, mark the response which you consider the best. So UPSC is saying that sometimes you may feel that there, there is more than one correct answer. UPSC itself is saying that, especially this happens in English comprehension. So English comprehension we'll take, uh, in, uh, we'll take during the course and I'll tell you how you need to approach English comprehension because English comprehension UPSC is not testing your English language that you need to understand. UPSC is not testing your English language. UPSC is testing your comprehension skill. Then even if you look into the syllabus of CSAT, you will see only comprehension. You will not see English comprehension. That's because UPSC is testing your comprehension skill, skill and not your English skill. So uh, why that is important is because you don't need to read the passage line by line. You just need to understand the passage as a whole. Okay, that is important. And sometimes, if if the question is like, what can you infer from from the passage? There may be two answers correct. Maybe two things will be correct. Maybe two options you can infer from the passage. But you need to choose the option which is best. You need to compare those two options, and then you have to choose those choose the option which is more aligned with the message of the passage. That is also important. That is why UPSC has given an instruction like this. Okay. Have you seen that in in, uh, in, in the English comprehension, UPSC will always ask which of the following is the best inference or crucial inference that can. UPSC will never ask like which of the following is the inference from the passage. UPSC will always add a, like a best or crucial word in between, word in front. Why? Because UPSC knows that out of this option, Maybe you can infer two options or three options, but you need to choose the option which is the best inference or the crucial inference. This is also important. This understanding is also important when it comes to cracking English comprehension questions. And I know that many of you, I mean, most of you, all of you maybe, you might have felt like there is more than one correct answer for an English comprehension question, right? You might have, this is because of this thing. So we will be learning all those comprehension skills also in the coming classes. Now I will give you some examples to show you how UPSC is asking questions. Okay. Or what UPSC is expecting from you in CSAT. It's not the calculation skills. I already told you. So what UPSC is expecting. So to understand that UPSC language, we'll be doing all the UPSC PYQs from the last five or six years in the class it itself. Why? Because you should understand what UPSC's language is. And only after understanding that UPSC's language, then only you will be able to, uh, when you get a question, if you know UPSC language, you will know where UPSC is going to make, you know, UPSC sometimes make, uh, compel you to do careless mistakes. So all those careless mistakes you can eliminate if you know the UPSC language. So that's why we will be discussing that UPSC language and PYQs in the class itself. Okay, and in, at home, you need to do the practice questions. UPSC questions will do in the class itself. Okay, so I will give some, a few examples to try to answer this question. So this is from, I think, 2022 or something, this question. 
just try to answer this question. We'll be studying all these things, okay? But I just wanted to show you what UPSC is expecting from you. So try to answer this question first. If you get the answer, you can just uh, message it in the chat box. Doesn't matter if it's wrong. And you know, I always say that getting wrong is actually good. Rather than making it uh, right, making it wrong is actually good right now. Because if you get a question wrong, then what happens is that you will uh, uh, understand more, more about it. Okay, you will think about it more. So then uh, in the original exam, you will be making it right. So uh, getting wrong is not an issue. Actually, I like getting wrong. Okay, so uh, whatever you can say, just like, what do you think the answer is? So uh, what do you think, uh, what is meant by consecutive? Consecutive means the numbers which are coming side by side. Closer number like one, two, three. These are consecutive numbers. Okay, others. So here, what is being asked? The sum of three consecutive integers is equal to their product. It means that three numbers which come side by side, their sum and product are equal. Okay, sum means they are adding whatever we are getting after adding. Product means whatever value we are getting after multiply it so do you know any such uh, any one number like that any one possibility like that this is a very common thing which UPS is asking like this uh, sum is equal to product so do you know any uh, one possibility if you feel like uh, you know if you don't want to type you can also unmute and just say the answer also, no problem. Yeah. So one, two, three. So this this you might be knowing. For many students, they will know that one, two, three, because one plus two plus three is six. 1 into 2 into 3 is also 6. So sum of 1, 2, and 3 is equal to product of 1, 2, and 3. So many students had answered this as 1 in the original examination. But here, what happened was that the question was three consecutive integers. So this integer was the most important term in this question. Okay. So what do you mean by integers? So we'll be teaching all those things. What is integers? What is natural number? All these things we'll be teaching in the class. Integers means that it can be negative numbers, it can be zero, and it can be positive numbers also. And natural numbers means positive integers. Like one, two, three, we call it as natural numbers. One, two, three, four. Okay. So all this classification we'll be learning tomorrow. But just I wanted to show you here that when it comes to integers, it can be negative numbers, it can be zero or positive numbers also. So if I am drawing a number line like this, zero will come in the middle, then one, two, three, four, like it's going. Here, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, it's going like this. So here you can see that one, two, and three are consecutive integers. So one plus two plus three and one into two into three are the same. That's okay. Now, if you take minus 1, 0, and 1. These are also consecutive integers. So minus 1 plus 0 plus 1, you will get as 0. Minus 1 into 0 into 1 also, you will get as 0. Okay. Again, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. These are also consecutive integers. So minus 3 plus minus 2 plus minus 1. This is equal to minus 6. Minus 3 into minus 2 into minus 1 is also minus 6. So we'll be learning all these negative uh, numbers, negative numbers, sum, and all we'll learn in the class. But here I just wanted to show you 
that by just making this to into integers, the answer is actually changing. Here the answer was three because this is a pair, this is a pair, and this is also a pair. If the question was three consecutive natural numbers, then the answer would have been one. But here, because it is integers, the answer is three. So this is how UPS is actually making that uh, careless mistake. So this natural, if you see UPSC papers, UPSC uses this integers, natural numbers a lot of times. So when that that integer change to natural number, the answer will be different. So this is one thing that UPSC is making, UPSC's language is, okay? Now I'll show you another thing. Okay, this uh, will like, like, okay, this one. This question, it's, it was from 2019. So the question is how many triplets satisfy the equation x plus y plus z is equal to c where x y and z are natural numbers so just try this question So here you should get like x plus y plus z is equal to 6. And how many such numbers are there? Like we have to give some value for x, we have to give some value for y, and we have to give some value for z. And you should get like x plus y plus z is 6. And it is said that x and y are natural numbers. That means you can only use 1, 2, 3 like that. You cannot use negative numbers or 0. Just try So one of you has told us 10 as the answer. Any other answers are there? Okay, just tell me one such possibility x plus y plus z you need to get six just tell me one possibility okay one two three fine so if you give one two and three to x y and z one plus two plus three six okay so that is one possibility fine now here it is, if I am giving x as 1, y as 3 and z as 2, this is also you will get as 6, right? This is a different possibility because here you are giving 2 to y and 3 to z. Here you are giving 3 to y and 2 to z. 2 to z. So if in, in this kind of question, if it's a triplets, then this is a different possibility. Okay, again you can write like here 2. Here 1, here 3, again you will get 6. Now if you, if you write 2, 3, 1, again it is a 6. So these are different, different possibilities. Now again for x, y, and z, if you give like 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1, all these are different possibilities. So 1, 2, 3 itself you can arrange in 6 different ways. So 6 possibilities are there now. Is there any other possibility? So someone has told like 4, 1, 1. Now, if I give x as 4, y as 1, and z as 1, then also it becomes 6. So here, you are giving y as 1, and z is also 1. Is it okay to give like that? Is it okay to give the same value to y and z here? What do you think? Is it okay? It is okay. Why? Because UPSC hasn't said that x, y, and z are distinct. If UPSC said that x, y, and z are distinct, that means x, y, and z are, have to be different. But here UPSC didn't use the 
sentence x, y, and z are distinct. In some questions, UPSC will use like x and y are distinct or x, y, and z are distinct. If UPSC say like that, then you cannot give the same value to x, y, and z. But here UPSC didn't say they are distinct. That means they can be same. So this is also something that UPSC use, that the word distinct. This is very important. So you can give 411 here. So that is a different possibility. So you can give 141. It is also a different possibility. Now you can give like 114 for X, Y, and Z. This is a different possibility. Okay. So these all are different possibilities. Now, is there any other possibility? So now we got like nine possibilities. Is there any other possibility? Yes, 2, 2, 2 also you can give. Here X, Y, and Z are the same. It's 2. But still you can give like that here. Because UPSC didn't say that X, Y, and Z are distinct. If UPSC say that X, Y, and Z are distinct, you cannot do like this. Do like this. Now, if you see the previous question, see here UPSC said that X and Y are distinct and non-zero. That means you cannot give like same value to X and Y in this question. And you cannot, you cannot also give zero to X and Y in this question. So this is the way UPSC is made. This is why I told you that you should understand UPSC's language. In all these key questions, it's not your calculation skill that UPSC is testing. It's your thinking skill. It's like whether you are able to identify the difference between natural numbers or integers. Whether you are able to identify the dis uh, difference between what is distinct and what is not. Okay. So all those things, all those thinking skills are being tested here. So this is the UPSC's language mostly. Okay, you understood? Now, again, this is a question from 2023. Maybe you might have seen this question. So try to answer this question. So why I am showing you all these things? Because this is the way you should learn also. Not just by doing tricks and all. You should understand how question is coming. You should understand how UPS is asking the questions as well. Okay, so try this question. Okay, someone said 36. So did you understood this question? Yaj has 10 pairs of red, 9 pairs of... So pair means 2. Like a pair of shoes means 2 shoes. So Raj has like 10 pairs of red. That means he has 20, shoe, 20 red shoes. 9 pairs of white means 18 white shoes will be there. 8 pairs of black shoes means 16 black shoes will be there. And all these are kept in a box. Now, if he randomly picks shoes one by one, so he's picking one shoe, then he's picking the next shoe like that, without replacement, from a box to get a pair of red shoes to wear. So he will wear only red shoes. Okay, he will wear only red shoes. And what is the maximum number of attempts he has to make? So let's say like Raj is a very lucky person. Okay, if Raj is a lucky person, he will get red shoes fast. So first he is picking, it is a red shoe. Again, he is picking. Again, it's a red shoe. So if he's lucky within two attempts, he will get the red shoes. But here it is the maximum number of attempts. So we have to think that Raj is not at all lucky. Let's say Raj is not at all lucky. So whatever he is picking initially, he will not get red shoes. So this you need to understand here. Okay. So now you have like 20 red pairs, 18 white pairs and 16 black shoes. So now our Raj is not lucky at all. He's unlucky. So whatever he's picking, let's say initially he's getting only white shoes. So he 18 times he picked the shoes and he got 18 white shoes. Because he's not lucky, he's not getting red shoes. Now again he started picking the shoes. 
again 16 times he picked the shoes but he is only getting black shoes now total 34 shoes he has taken okay 34 shoes he has taken and all these shoes are not red right so now you might think that okay next total 34 shoes he have picked now he picked one more shoe it will be a red shoe because white and black is already finished so next will be a red shoe again he picked one more shoe it will be a red shoe so total 36 shoes he picked 36 shoes you will think that okay then he got two red uh, two uh, red shoes he got then he can wear the red shoes but 36 is not the right answer why do you think it is not the, anyone knows why it is not 36 not the right answer and this is also a question where most of the students uh, made it wrong because most of the students may uh, wrote 36 as the answer but 36 is not the answer so do you know why anyone You can guess also, no problem. If even if it's a mistake, it's okay. No, no worries at all. Okay, get a pair of shoes. So you mean like that is correct, but so pair of shoes means what? You will whenever uh, just think like you are uh, wearing a shoe. You have to. You will be having a left shoe and you will be having a right shoe. So you have to get one left shoe and one right shoe to wear the shoes, right? Now, let's say 34 times he picked, all he picked the right, uh, white ones and the black ones. Now there is 20, 10 pairs of red shoes. 10 pairs of red shoes means there is 10 left shoes and then th there is 10 right shoes. And our Raj is not at all lucky. Now, let's say he started picking, then let's say he's getting all the left shoes. So he got 10 left shoes. Still he cannot wear. He need a pair of shoes. Now the next one, it will be a right shoe. So total 45 shoes he need to take. Maximum it is 45 shoes. So 45 was the right answer. So this is also your thinking ability. It's not about your calculation or whatever. It's only your thinking ability. So this is this is some type of questions that UCC is asking. I will show you one more question here. So you don't, this type of question, that question statement, that kind of question will be doing in the class also. But I wanted to show you just one thing here. So here the question is like, is P greater than Q, whatever it is. Now here, did UPSC say that P and Q are not? Normally, if a question is there like this, UPSC will say that P and Q are natural numbers or P and Q are integers. So what do we think here? What it is? P and Q, are they natural numbers? Are they whole numbers? We'll be studying all these things, okay, natural number, whole numbers, everything will be studying. But in this question, what do you think P and Q is? Whether it is natural numbers, whether it is whole number, whether it is, whether it is integers, what do you think? Yes, it can be anything. Because UPSC didn't say that P and Q are natural numbers or P and Q are integers in this question. That means P and Q can be anything. P and Q can be anything means it can be 1, 2, 3, it can be negative numbers, it can be 0, it can be even decimals, it can be fraction, it can even be not a real number also. It can be anything. So if there are endless possibilities for P and Q here, so if there is endless possibility for P and Q, do you think that you can answer this question? There is a high, like, highly high chance that you cannot answer this question because if I say P and Q are integers, there is a, or P and Q are natural numbers, there are some limited values for P and Q. Then there is a chance like you can answer the question because there is a limit for P and Q. But here UPC didn't mention anything about P and Q. So there, there is endless possibilities for P and Q. That means P and there is a high chance that you cannot answer this question. So just by thinking like that, you can answer this question. This is actually a little bit difficult question, but if you can understand that UPC has been mentioned whether they are natural numbers or whether they are integers or whatever it is, then the answer here was D actually. The question cannot be answered 
using the both statements. Why? Because P and Q has multiple possibilities. So in the class, I will be discussing this uh, question. Then there I will uh, uh, show you how, how it came and everything. But just understood that understand that this is how UPC is training questions. So if you can understand that UPC language, then it will be very easy for you to answer the questions. Okay, it's not always about your calculations. Okay. Now, I already told you about comprehension. Comprehension, it is not testing your English language. It is testing your comprehension skills. So comprehension skills is different. We'll be teach, uh, I, I'll tell you what all these comprehension skills are in the class, in English comprehension class. I'll tell you all these things. And there are some simple methods and easy ways, easy tricks to easily get the answers also. So in many of the cases, you have, you actually, uh, there is no need for you to read the passage also. Without even reading the passage, you can answer the question in many cases, like this one. So can you answer, uh, can you, without reading this passage, can you try, just try to answer this question? This is just an example. Uh, in the class, I'll show you many, many, many examples. Okay. So one, uh, someone told D and others. What do you think? A, B, okay. Okay, here the question is like, which among the following is the most crucial message conveyed by the above passage? Again, if you can see the word most and crucial here. Why? Because maybe one or two messages there, but you have to choose which is the most crucial one. Now, option A is climate change has caused Arctic summer to be short, but temperatures to be high. Okay, so uh, you know that uh, we have this climate change and everything. Normally, what is happening with climate change, whether the summer is getting long in Arctic or short in Arctic? What do you think? If there is a high chance that it's, summer is getting long, right? Because the, the sun will be shining more, there is global warming. So there is a chance that summer is getting long, not short. So normally, UPSC's passage, it will not go against your common sense or common knowledge. So you can use your common knowledge and common sense to answer the questions or eliminate some options. So there is a chance that this is not right. Now, uh, someone said B, so B will take like, let's say C. Without the presence of polar bears, the food chains in Arctic region will disappear. So this is a little bit extreme. So if polar bears are not there in uh, Arctic, food chains will get affected. That is fine. Food chains will get affected. There will be issues with food chain and everything. But Food chains will disappear is actually extreme. You know that uh, in our uh, in the lifespan of Earth, there has been many uh, many species has gone extinct. But does it mean that the food chain as a whole disappeared? No. It might have affected, but slowly and gradually, Earth will retain the equilibrium if if uh, some species go extinct, right? So disappear is actually an extreme thing. So this is also there is a high chance that this is also wrong. Now, when it comes to B, it says that polar bears can be shifted to South Pole to ensure their survival. And D is climate change posts a threat to the survival of polar bears. So which of the of these two options you think that it's more like a message to you? Message is something, uh, you know, it's something like, it has to, it has to be like a message. So which of these two options is more like a message? It's D, right? D is saying that climate change was threat to polar bears. That is okay. You know, it is, and it's very general thing. It's very general. Now, when it comes to B, it's saying that shifting from one place to another. That is also a very common type of option that UPSC uses. UPSC will say like, some UPSC will say some issues in agriculture field. 
and they will say that like farmers need to be shifted to manufacturing sector so that shifting or switching it's actually very difficult it has to be a gradual process you cannot suddenly switch farmers or what whoever it may be you cannot switch some person or a group of person from one place to another very fast so that that kind of switching shifting options normally it's wrong and also polar bears you know they are in polar region uh, they are in uh, arctic region you cannot just take them from their natural habitat and, and put it into some other place and you can ensure their survival it's difficult actually so here if this is for like a message also so in this way without even reading the passage not just this uh, passage many passages in 2023 i think around 20 passages if you know upsc's language very well you can actually answer without even reading the passage in 2023 because 2023 comprehension was very easy so we'll be learning that upsc language also and for learning upsc language you should only do upsc's pyqs uh, from english comprehension you, go, you should, don't go to any other sources for english comprehension you take upsc pyqs and do it multiple times because if you do any other uh, institutes or whatever uh, sources you have if you are doing the comprehension from there that language will also come into your mind so you will think in that language also but to do upsc's questions you need to understand upsc's language and upsc's way of writing the passage so you have to do pyqs so just do upsc pyqs multiple times in english comprehension then you will understand upsc's language very well and then you can easily solve the questions even without reading the passage okay so now i will show you one thing this this is from 2024 pcet so many questions from 2024 pcet uh, many similar questions were there uh, in our book okay the book that i'll be sending to you if you join the course i'll be sending you a book which i i am going to publish actually so that book i'll be sending to you uh, so there will be 1500 plus questions in that book so from that book many questions have came in 2020 similar questions were came so also from our test series as well so uh, you have to do all the questions from the that book and you have to take the test series also because test series also i am preparing uh, after uh, identifying upsc's language identifying upsc's trend and everything and also the questions from the book is also like upsc's language it's not just uh, uh, just answering because that is one thing that most students have told me because upsc language is different and the questions that they get to practice from other sources whether it's a book or whether it's from internet it's very simple uh, not like simple direct questions you will get okay but uh, that uh, that is uh, not like how you need to practice you need to practice upsc language questions so i uh, in this book i have prepared questions in that way only in upsc language i have prepared questions and the test series will also be like that so from there many questions came these are only a few examples so this these are some questions i i'll send it to you actually these are some questions similar questions which came many questions are there actually so you need to complete the book and you need to take the test series also okay so test series is included with the course okay so i'll just uh, brief you how our course will be okay so there will around uh, 100 plus hours will be there to cover uh, quantitative part reasoning part and comprehension part also comprehension pyqs will be doing in the class itself from 2070 i cannot do all the pyqs because it will take a lot of time so comprehension will be taking to, from 2070 uh, paper will be doing in the class itself other questions you can do from home also i will uh, give you comprehension handout with, with the compilation of pyqs so you can uh, do it now as i already told you pyqs will do in the class itself because you need to master the upsc language that is actually very important so that we'll do and we will also use this space the repetition tactic so what is space the repetition technique uh, it's actually a very good technique to learn much better so uh, i will be giving you the book right so in that book you will be having many questions so we'll take number system i i'll be taking number system first so then uh, pyqs of number system will do it in the class system then practice questions of number system you will get from the book so every day you need to do like five or six questions from that book okay this is space repetition and maybe one or two questions you didn't got answer 
or you got confused so that questions you need to mark it there mark in the book itself and then after like one week or so you need to come back and do the questions which you were not able to do it in the first attempt so again in the set second attempt maybe one or two questions you didn't got then again you need to come back after at, at a later stage so this thing this is called actually spaced repetition so spaced repetition technique you have to do while solving the questions okay so that i can assist you also in that so in that way you will get you will be more consistent and you will be also more structured okay now you will be given that book i already told you there are 1500 questions and solutions will also be there now then we will be having personal mentorships on demand if you need personal mentorship if you need if you have doubt regarding because sometimes uh, in the class itself you may not ask the doubts that you have you will be shy or something like that so if you have doubts or if you have need extra clarifications on something and we can arrange personal mentorships on demand then there will be periodic tests and also a series of quiz that is included so total around 13 tests will be there and other small small tests i'll give in between also okay after one topic or two topic i'll give you small small tests also so the, that test will be also in a structured manner and uh, i think uh, uh, towards january end or february first or second week we'll end our classes we'll complete the uh, classes and then we will be having some strategy sessions or we'll take a paper and i'll show you how you need to come to do it how you need to strategize this practice sessions and uh, test series all those things will be there after february till and you will get support uh, till prelims you will be having support okay you can always uh, message me if there is any uh, issues and i'll give you my number also so if you have any doubts you can directly contact me you can contact me in whatsapp or telegram i'll be available uh, and if you need extra clarification we can arrange personal mentorship for now recordings i'll give you recordings also if you cannot attend live sessions you will be given recordings and it will be there till prelim and daily practice questions i am already giving daily practice questions in telegram it's such a uh, it's actually everyone can access it so uh, you will get that daily questions also okay yeah timing actually this three classes i have uh, uh, like it, it's from 2 pm to 3:30 pm this three classes it's only 1.5 hours i have planned this three class first three classes but then after uh, these three this is open session so everyone can access so after these uh, classes we'll get a correct number how many students are joining and all and for those students i will uh, put a poll where um, which timing is more uh, okay with everyone we'll choose that time okay uh, either uh, forenoon or afternoon whatever it is we can uh, confirm the timing after these three classes it's according to uh, whatever is okay with everyone we can choose that time okay and it will be two hour sessions from next week once the open sessions are completed it will be two hour sessions because we need like six hours per week if we can get six hours per week we can complete the classes in four months like in january and we can complete it okay okay so uh, what should be your strategy so i have told you so many things the so first thing is the main problem with many students is that they don't like math right many students don't like math but i am assuring you math is actually very uh, actually uh, very interesting and i will make sure that you will feel that math is interesting so we'll be taking the classes in that way like you will start loving math so uh, so that way only we are taking classes so first you have to start loving see that start loving math start loving comprehension and everything because it's not a big task if you are doing it in the right way if you are doing consistently it's actually easy to uh, crack this that i'm not saying it's easy to get 100 marks in this that it's difficult but to clear this that it's easy if you are doing it in the right way if you are doing it consistently if you are uh, doing if you are practicing every day if you have the conceptual clarity and everything you can solve it so we'll do that so give importance to this that now in the class we will take the concepts really well okay so understand the concepts if you have any doubts you can ask me and everything so understand the concepts for that we will do in the class itself then important topics i already told you there are some important topics so you can focus a little more you have to focus on everything but 
uh, give a little more importance to those areas and you need to practice consistently this is actually very important and many students are not doing this so the thing is you know uh, i'll give you just an example if i give you a guitar today maybe some students they already know how to play guitar i don't know but if i give you if you are a student who doesn't know how to play guitar and i if i give you guitar today and tell you that just uh, uh, play the guitar you won't be able to play the guitar but if you practice every day every day you practice after one year if i say you play the guitar it will be very easy it will come automatically similar with c sat because c sat you need some abilities which is actually different from paper one paper one you have geography history whatever it is even if you can uh, study by heart you will be able to give answers and now upsc is becoming more and more practical also in this year it was more practical and mains were also a little bit more practical so if you can by heart that by hearting if you know how to by heart you can uh, get good marks in paper one but paper two is not like that paper two you need to develop a different ability so to develop some ability whatever it may be whether it's driving whether it's playing guitar you have to do it consistently so uh, don't think like see that i will uh, in the last two months uh, even if in the last two months you are giving 24 hours to see that it's very difficult so you have to give just 15 to 30 minutes every day starting from today if you can give 15 to 30 minutes every day till your prelim it will be very easy for you to clear see that so that is very important many students are not doing that 15 minutes if you think about it 15 minutes is actually very easy for you it's just like going to have a tea you are get, taking more than 15 minutes to having a tea right so it's only that so i am only asking your 15 to apart from the classes i am only asking your 15 to 30 minutes every day to do the tea that's all okay and i am giving you the questions also i will give you the everything that you needed i'll give it to you you just need to do it consistently okay now pyqs you need to solve that is very important uh, when it comes to comprehension and all the other Uh, whatever quantitative reasoning P PYQs is very important because PYQs is important because you need to understand UPSC language. Again, I am making it easy for you. If I tell you do and go and do the PYQs at home, you will not do. So in the class itself, we are doing that. So whenever we I am doing it in the class, try to attempt the question. Let it be wrong. I already told you making it wrong is not an not a problem. this uh, making failures are actually stepping stones to success so you can make failures there is no problem in that one if you make failures now you will not make failure in the real exam okay so you have that so pyqs will do it in the class but whenever we are doing it in the class try to do it and you make mistakes no problem but don't just sit idle and wait for me to do it try to do something let your brain work a little bit then only you will develop that ability that i was talking about okay so do like that so uh, we'll do it in the class itself now this is picking the questions effectively when it comes to an exam when in the exam hall picking the right questions is very important again i'll be taking a one full session for you on how to approach the question paper how you can pick effectively and all i'll take a different session okay so we can do that also now this is the schedule of the classes today is 30th september we are having the orientation session and tomorrow and day after tomorrow we'll be having more classes on number system you can attend that and this session i will also upload in uh, youtube it will be public because it's an open session anyone can see okay so after that from the next week onwards we'll start our real classes so i have actually divided it into different modules module 1 i have included five topics like module 2 module 3 i have divided this like this because to have that structure properly so once i complete the module i'll give you a module test and then once i complete module 2 i will give you a test and then after module 2 you will have a bigger test uh, combining module 1 and 2 so then like that it's going and once we complete all the portions then you will be having strategy sessions practice sessions and five full tests will also be there five three set full tests will also be there so you need to take the test also it is very important because uh, many questions actually came from the last year test that i prepared if you ask the, uh, your friends you will understand that so taking test is also important okay you have to do that now uh, you will be having many uh, i think many of your questions may be answered in this session 
okay uh, many questions are being asked so if you have any questions you can now ask me so these are some of the questions actually if you need to answer if i need to answer any of these questions you can tell me also and if you have any other questions whether it's about paper 1 or paper 2 whatever you can ask me and try to be more you know interactive also you can there is no issue i will not judge you even if you get the answer uh, incorrect you can criticize me you can if there is if, uh, i need to improve in some places you can tell me there is no issue okay so anyone if you have any questions you can ask me about the classes or about the sat in general paper 1 in general what are If you want to ask in Malayalam, if you want to ask in Hindi, there is no problem. For other students, I can translate it also. There is no problem. Nothing. You can type also. Okay. so we'll uh, actually we'll end our classes today so this was actually an orientation session for you to understand the satellite in which from tomorrow we'll start our real classes okay it will be uh, number 6 so if you don't have any questions you can leave the classes if anyone is there who need to ask any questions you can stay and ask okay Okay, then then okay, bye then. I think there is no question. Okay.